Hey guys, it's Tom from Something RS and a happy new year to you all and welcome to 2014. And with the new year, Jagex have given us a juicy little behind the scenes article for what's to come in January. So diving right in, first up we have the Power to the Players update, which is an in-game voting system for players to vote on the future updates that they want to see first. And to give you an idea of what these polls will involve, uh, first up we'll have Would You Rather Have the Elven City Quest or the Invention Skill? And I think we all know that the unanimous answer for that is the Elf City. And there'll also be other things such as which new type of dragon would you like to see? Which group of creatures would you like to have reworked drop tables to? And lots of other things like that throughout the year as this year is supposed to be the year of the player again. So yeah, look forward to being able to vote on content. Next up is Hattie and Skull making their annual return to RuneScape. For those of you who don't know, these are two basically giant wolves who seem to visit RuneScape every January and they drop various items of clothing that give you bonus XP in woodcutting and agility. But this time around, there will be a Valkyrie called Air, I think, who basically suspects that with the return of the gods to RuneScape, she anticipates that this will be the end of all things to come. So she wants you to help her prepare for that by gathering her a spear and helmet. And you'll do that through gathering at the Fremenic Province Divination Colony. Or you can get them as drops from Hattie and Skull themselves. And you can get multiple copies of either the spear or the helmet, but in order to get both, you'll need to trade your item with another player who has the other item. Killing Hattie and Skull will give you bonus XP in combat, woodcutting and agility, as well as new equipment rewards, and helping air will give you bonus prayer experience and divination experience. Next up on this month's agenda is an update to the player-owned ports minigame. There are two new zones, the Shield and the Loop, which will be opened up this month, which will both offer new resources and trade goods. And you'll be able to unlock scrolls for a new level 85 cape, ring and throwing darts. Along with all this comes three new adventurers, which is the Trapper, which is a hunter, the Chef, which is a chef, and the architect, which is the construction expert. And to unlock these adventurers' stories, you'll have to have level 90 hunter, cooking, and construction, respectively. There will also be new crew members for you to unlock, and new ship components, as well as a new random event, as well as a new trader who will trade your excess resources into valuable trade goods for scroll items. And there will be over 300 new voyages in total, so get working on your ports. Next up on the list, the giant mole is getting some love. While the old model does look very cute, I think we can all agree it needs a bit of an update. And on screen now you can see some concept art for the ugly new model. I'm going to miss the cute one, but, you know, it did need an update. So this new reworked giant mole is intended to be an introduction for lower level players to PVM mechanics and it's going to be aimed at a small group of level 110 players. And there's also going to be a hard mode for three man groups or for higher level players who want some challenging solo content. The rewards from this can be an upgrade to the anti-dragon shield farming potions which speed up the growth of your farming patches and a consumable root which can remove damage over time effects from the user. And finally Slayer will be getting a few convenience updates this month. All basic Slayer Helms will now be getting Slayer Gem functionality which means you'll be able to see how many kills you've got left with your Slayer Helm. You'll also be getting the option to fuse your Slayer Rings and Ferocious Rings with your Slayer Helm so that you can use those teleports at any time. And you'll also be able to upgrade your Slayer Helmet to a level 70 item with higher stats. 
Co-op Slayer is also getting some love as there will be some new skins for Freezy, the Co-op Slayer reward pet, and you'll also be able to adopt a brand new Slayer inspired pet and unlock some new perks to make Co-op Slayer kills better. And finally, they're also going to remove smoking kills as a requirement to earn Slayer points. And that just about wraps up this month's content. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see more RuneScape videos and guides, and I'll see you guys in the next video.